So Adrian, Storage Roadshow this spring, you've been talking with some urgency uh, that change is coming. Um, and that relates mostly to, to what's happening with CIPC as a sprout suppressant. Do you want to give us the latest update on that? Okay, yeah, well the current situation is that uh, CIPC is recommended for non-renewal. So that means that it's gone through a European review process and essentially there have been some issues with it and therefore uh, the uh, authorities are uh, likely to withdraw its approval and we anticipate as a result of that that we will lose the use of CIPC within the next two seasons. Um, exactly the what the time frame is, we're not clear on at the moment, but we anticipate that we will probably lose it by 2020 loading season. So, so the latest I heard was it was that um, it's now gone to an appeals committee, and that the track record through appeals committee is is quite um, challenging. It is quite rare to see a see a product survive so that process. Exactly that. Yes, I mean the very few products that have ever come out of the appeals process, and given the uh, history of voting that's already taken place, uh, it's unlikely that it will be turned around in the appeals. So, so that means as an industry, we'll have to start looking at alternative approaches. Now you've been talking about maleic hydrazide as part of the control strategy uh, through these meetings, but it's not without its challenges. And we, we've been talking a bit about stock feed and the issue there. Yes, because maleic hydrazide's had a, a new label issued since November 2018. And as part of that label, there is a data gap um, and the approval holders for uh, lake hydrazide need to satisfy that data gap uh, before they will permit use of uh, MH treated potatoes as stock feed. So that's having a knock on effect in the industry uh, in terms of how businesses are going to be able to uh, segregate MH treated uh, crop going forward. Uh, and some businesses are saying they won't be able to do that and therefore they may limit the acceptance of MH. Uh, treated crop. So if, I, so if I'm a grower, I'm, I'm gearing up for planting right now um, and I'm thinking about MH as part of my, my options going forwards. What, what is it that I need to think about today? Uh, well, you need to talk to your customer first and foremost to get their position um, and you need to uh, be thinking about whether there are going to be other options that you might be able to use as part of your sprout suppression strategy if MH was there, because you may have limitations um, by the time you get to the autumn. So some of the, some of the other approved options you've been talking about are ethylene and, and spearmint oil. Uh, what yeah. do we know about them and, and how they might be used? Uh, ethylene is a very uh, well-known sprout suppressant. It's been in the industry for some time, primarily in the fresh industry. Uh, it is a very variety specific option and therefore we, you need to know how uh, your variety reacts with ethylene and speak to the ethylene uh, suppliers um, as to how to deal with your variety um, with ethylene. Um, it's not quite as efficacious as CIPC so it doesn't work quite so well um, and you need to obviously think about the consequences of that. Um, Ethylene works well when the crops within the ethylene, as soon as you take the ethylene away, so unloading the store for example, then you could get sprouting and it has implications for things like shelf life periods. There's not been much uh, storage under ethylene for processing uh, because there have been uh, suggestions that it can affect fry colour, uh, but it may be an option that we do need to go to for specific varieties in processing and uh, we know that some of the big processors are already looking at ethylene as an option. Um, moving on spearmint oil, uh, that again has been used, used in the uh, fresh market uh, with some success uh, as a follow-on treatment from CIPC for example. Um, we will have more reliance on uh, the use of spearmint oil in the fresh market uh, going forward. And we may also see it used in processing, but uh, again, some limit on its um, capabilities in comparison with CIPC. So thinking more globally then, Adrian, we, we know there are alternatives that are being used in other countries, but we, we haven't gotten here yet. What, what do we know about those? Uh, well, the best option that we have uh, available is 1,4-dimethylnaphthalene, which is a bit of a mouthful, so we call it DMN. 
Um, that has been available in continental Europe uh, for a couple of years now. Uh, it's now approved in Southern Ireland as well, and uh, we're hopeful that it will get approval in the UK in the coming months. Um, there's some additional data had to be submitted by the approval holder, um, but we understand that the data is going in, and we're uh, anticipating that there will be some indication as to whether we can get DMN onto our markets uh, by this autumn. So, over the years, we've looked at other um, essential oils and plant oils. Um, what's on the horizon for us there? Uh, two products, really. Orange oil uh, is currently in trials. Uh, we're doing work on it at Sutton Bridge uh, with the Fresh Potato Suppliers Association. Uh, it's being focused on the fresh market, and uh, we are hopeful that there will be some uh, approval of that this season, or at the very latest, by 2020. Uh, so that's one option, uh, and then we have a product called uh, De uh, Free Deccan 2 Own, which is uh, going to be known as Smart Block. That's coming from the US, but at this stage, it hasn't even got an Annex One listing in Europe, so it's probably so that's two, quite distant, two exactly. to three years okay. away, I think something like that. So AHDB Potatoes Board have got really concerned about this as a priority for us, and, and they've put an extra. Um, £800,000 on the line, um, above and beyond what, what we normally spend on storage research. Could you just describe to us how that's being deployed uh, for the benefit of our levy payers? Yeah, we're looking at uh, a range of alternative sprout suppressants in efficacy trials at Southern Bridge, um, and we're also looking at uh, field-based treatments of black hydrazide at spot farms. Uh, we're also looking at um, Dormancy assessment of varieties uh, is going to be increasingly important as we move uh, towards a non-CIPC scenario to have uh, the benefit of natural dormancy uh, in storage and therefore we need more information about the relative performance of, of varieties. Um, so those are the key points that we're looking at um, in that programme uh, and there'll also be a lot of communication events um, that will be associated with it as well. Yeah, so, so that's going to be quite critical, isn't it? Because our levy payers, their store managers and the supply chains are going to want to get hold of this um, PDQ, aren't they? This is going to be quite urgent. So, so how do they go about getting hold of some of this information as it comes up? Uh, well, we've been running a, a, a series of uh, roadshow events over the spring. There will be more events after planting, um, so we'll be around the country talking to growers, talking to suppliers, uh, so they have the latest information. Uh, we're also setting up an initiative called Storage Network, which is where we're going to use agronomists, advisors and trainers within the industry uh, as advocates of the AHDB work and the, work the work that's coming out of Sutton Bridge and ask those people to disseminate it on a one-to-one -one basis with individual growers. Uh, we want to be able to get to uh, individual stores um, and talk about the specifics of how those stores are going to be managed. There will be a need to go back to some of the basics of storage because we won't have the safety net of CIPC going forward and therefore we need people to relook at their stores, how they're getting the best out of those stores, are they do, uh, complying with best practice. So if we're trying to leave our, our levy pairs with some top line messages, uh, what I'm thinking of here is that this is about talking to your customer, um, it's about getting to one of the events or meetings, um, it's about visiting the website, um, and it's about getting hold of that advice. Absolutely. There's a lot of information on the storage hub which people need to access. They need to look at that and um, that will give them the direct line into the storage advice line. It will give them access to the storage bulletin. Uh, there's the new store manager's guide on there as well. All of those are going to be uh, essential components of uh, scaling up the standard of store management to cope with the uh, situation with no CIPC going forward.